Hello everyone, I am the Desert Gardener, and today we're going to be talking about bugs. So I've got my tea, let's get started. Now, this is actually going to be part two. In part one, I talked about beneficial bugs, how to identify them and how to attract them to your garden. Today, we're going to be talking exclusively about pests. Now, if you missed part one, I'll put a link to it at the end. You can watch them in either order. It really doesn't matter. Now, the best way to deal with a pest is to bring in those beneficials, like we talked about in part one. But sometimes a pest can get out of control and Mother Nature needs a little help. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So let's start off with the pill bug and the earwig. Now, they're completely different bugs. However, we can treat them the same. So I'm going to talk about them together. Now, there are lots of uh, myths on the internet about what to do about these kinds of bugs. Um, you can, uh, there are beer traps and oil traps, uh, sticky traps, newspaper traps. Unfortunately, none of them really work very well. I mean, you will catch these bugs, but not in any significant number to do anything about them. So really, the best thing to do is to keep everything off the ground. These are crawling insects. They don't usually climb up the plant very often. So if you can keep things off the ground, you'll go a long way from mitigating any problems. For example, with tomatoes, you just put everything in a tomato cage, keep the uh, lower branches trimmed, nothing should be hanging on the ground, and you should be okay. And as I've mentioned many times, with peppers, put them in a container, put them up on a, t on a table, spray the table eggs with poison, and you're not gonna have any problems with these, these types of bugs. So the next one is spider mites. Now, this is where your journal is gonna come in handy. As I've talked about before, many of these uh, bugs have a very regular cycle. So they're gonna show up about the same time every year. So if you have a journal or a calendar or even a reminder on your phone, something like that, you'll know when they're coming and you can keep an eye out for them and start using neem oil or something like that to keep them away. But with spider mites, they're so small, you really can't see them without a magnifying glass. So what you need to do is get a little spray bottle, one of the cheap 99 cent ones you can get at the 99 cent store, and you just mist your pepper plants. And you'll be able to see the water droplets catch on the webbing. And this is a sign that you have spider mites. So what do you do about them? Well, the first thing you should do is um, quarantine that plant. So pick up your pepper plant, uh, pick up the container, move it to somewhere else where it's not around any of your other plants. The next thing you're gonna do is trim off whatever branch you're gonna, you see the webbing on. So just cut off that entire branch, throw it away. Now don't put it in your compost pile, uh, put it in the trash and let the city take it away so you get rid of it completely. Now once you've done that, take a hose with a sprayer and spray that plant down really well to get rid of any other ones that are still on the plant, and then spray with some neem oil. Now, if you don't have a recipe for neem oil, I'm gonna put it down in the, in the description. You should always have a spray bottle of neem oil handy. It's very helpful. Now, the next one is ants and aphids. Now, ants aren't really an issue. Um, they're pretty easy to get rid of, and they don't usually hurt your plants. Um, problem is, ants are a sign that you have aphids because ants will love to eat the honeydew that aphids excrete. So they have a very symbiotic re relationship. In fact, ants will actually fight off uh, beneficial insects that come to try to eat the aphids. So the first thing you want to do is try to get rid of the ants. So you, uh, there are lots of uh, uh, methods for that, so I won't go into that too much, but you know different sprays and boric acid and stuff like that will get rid of the ants. Once you do that, then you have to get rid of the aphids. So the first thing you're going to do is, um, like before, you're going to take a, a spray, a hose with a sprayer, and you're going to spray it on the underside of every leaf really well. And they, they don't uh, hold on very well. A strong spray of water is usually enough to uh, um, knock them off the plant. You can also rub the bottom of the leaf with your hand or with a sponge or a towel, something like that. They're a soft-bodied insect, so just barely touching them will kill them. 
So this will get rid of them and then start spraying with neem oil again. And this will keep them from coming back. Now another thing you can do is right about the time that you think they're going to be showing up, start giving your plants a worm casting fertilizer. Now worm castings have an enzyme in them that aphids don't like. So when the plant absorbs uh, worm castings as a fertilizer and it, it uh, goes through their system, the aphids will be less likely to try to feed on that plant because they don't like that enzyme. Now just a little side note here on worm castings. Uh, they don't keep very long. So don't buy a big huge bag and use it over the next couple of years. It'll dry out and lose most of its effectiveness. So buy a small little bag just what you think you're going to use over the next three months. And usually that's enough for the season for me. And the next season I'll buy a new bag and start over. That way it's fresh and it'll be more effective. So the next thing is tomato hornworms. Now, fortunately, they're really easy to spot because they're huge. They must be about uh, three or four inches long. So, and they're pretty easy to get rid of. You just simply pick them up and throw them away. And of course, if you don't want to touch them, you can uh, uh, knock them into a, a bucket of soapy water or something like that. Or some people like to uh, take their pruning shears and cut them in half, but I don't know, I think it's more humane to just pick them up and move them out of your garden. Now, the other thing you need to know is what the, their other stages look like. For example, the hawk moth. The hawk moth is going to lay eggs and the eggs are going to turn into the tomato hornworm. So even though the hawk moth is a really cool and um, attractive looking uh, bug, it is going to turn into a pest at some point. So if you see them, you may want to try trapping them and releasing them someplace else to get rid of them. Now, if you, uh, if you see a tomato hornworm that has a bunch of little white uh, egg sacs stuck to it, you may want to especially keep that tomato hornworm alive because that's not its own eggs. That is the eggs of a parasitic wasp. So what's going to happen is those eggs are going to hatch, the wasps are going to come out, and they're gonna feed on the tomato hornworm, killing it. And the parasitic wasp is a beneficial. So we wanna keep those alive, but you do still wanna get it out of your garden. So put on a pair of gloves, pick them up, put them in your compost pile or something like that. Keep them alive, let, let, the, uh, let the wasps hatch. Now, another thing you can do is plant green onions around your tomato plants. Now, I've talked about this before, when the hawk moth is looking for a place to lay its eggs, it is attracted to the, the smell of your tomato plants. But the green onions have a stronger smell, so it'll mask that odor. And the uh, hawk moth will get confused, not be able to find your tomatoes, and you won't have any problems with tomato hornworms. It works pretty well. So the next one is the Japanese beetle. Now, fortunately, we don't get a lot of these here in the desert. There are some places in the world where they can be absolutely devastating in huge numbers. They'll just completely wipe out whole fields of crops. And uh, they make this noise that in large numbers can literally be deafening. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, but here we just get a few, so they're pretty simple to deal with. You just uh, knock them into a, a bucket of uh, soapy water or something like that. It gets rid of them. But we need to keep the numbers down because in large numbers they can really become a problem. Now, if you live in a place where there are a lot of them, really your only solution is to net uh, your tomato plants. Uh, so because they're such a large bug, they can't get through a uh, small weave netting. So just net your plants and that'll help keep them out. Now, the next one is fungus gnats. Now, I did a whole video on fungus gnats, but I'll jump right to the end here on this one. There are a lot of uh, myths on the internet again with how to get rid of fungus gnats, and most of them just simply don't work. So there are really only two things that you need to know for fungus gnats. The first one is when you're about to plant uh, a house plant, you need to take that potting soil and put it in some sort of colander, and you pour boiling hot water over it. This will kill the fungus gnat eggs that are already in the potting soil. That way when you plant up your plant and you bring it indoors, 
you're not bringing fungus gnats into your house. Now, if you forget to do that, or you some manage to get through anyway, there are some things that you can do once they get in the house. And that is, first off, get another little sprayer. But this one has to be an opaque sprayer because um, a hydrogen peroxide will lose its effectiveness when you expose it to sunlight. So get yourself an opaque sprayer and put four parts water to one part hydrogen peroxide and begin misting the top of the soil on all your house plants every, at least once a day. And this will kill the, uh, the bugs and the, uh, the eggs for the, uh, for the uh, fungus gnats. And this will get rid of them. Now, if you want to speed up the process, you can put some flypaper nearby. This will kill some of the adults. But uh, flypaper in it, on itself isn't going to fix the problem. You need to get rid of the eggs. And uh, once they're in the house, the hydrogen peroxide is really the best way to do that. Don't bother with the traps and the other stuff. They're just not effective. So the last one we're going to talk about is leaf miners. Now again, this is where your journal comes in. They show up at a very regular time. You know, once, once it gets close to that time, you can start spraying neem oil on your plants. This will keep the, uh, the flies that lay the, uh, the eggs um, that turn into the leaf miners uh, away. So it'll stop the problem before it starts. But if you start getting them, there are a few things you can do. Uh, one is you can just simply pinch along that little trail and that will kill the, the larva that is crawling around and eating uh, the leaf. Now, if you don't want to do that, um, no problem. Just simply uh, trim off that leaf. Just make sure to don't put that leaf in your compost pile. Put it in the trash. Let the city take it away. You need to get it off the property. Um, fortunately, if you uh, keep up with the neem oil and get rid of them quickly, they're usually not much of a problem. Um, leaf miners are rarely going to be an issue to the point where they're really going to hurt the plant. They're just mostly a cosmetic issue. So once you get rid of them, um, they don't usually come back. So they're not usually a huge problem. But like I said at the beginning, the best way to deal with these sort of uh, uh, pests is to attract those beneficials. So uh, again, I talk more about that in part one, and I'm going to link to that at the end. And my next video, I'm going to do an, my third installment on gophers. I've come up with some new methods that are not only effective, but very humane. So if you want to see those, you know, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.